Welcome to this video, which provides an introduction to DataCytes APIs and the metadata formats used to create and update DOIs. I'm Kelly Stathis, DataCytes Technical Community Manager. And I'm Mike Bennett. I'm an application developer at DataCite. So in this uh, video, we'll cover um, how to access DataCytes APIs, how to retrieve metadata using the REST API, and how to create and update DOIs using the REST API. We'll begin with how to access Datacite's APIs. Datacite has two main APIs that you'll encounter, both of which are for creating and updating DOIs. The first and most important is the Datacite REST API. This is the API that we recommend you use to retrieve information about your DOIs and your account including DOI metadata and citations. This API can also be used by repositories to create and update DOIs. The REST API is what Datacite Fabrica is based on, so it can basically do everything that you can do in the Fabrica web interface. The other API that can create and update DOIs is the MDS API. MDS stands for Metadata Store, and this API predates our REST API. There are still repository integrations that use the MDS API so you may encounter it in vendor system integrations. That said, we recommend that new integrations use the REST API. So that's what we'll focus on for this training. Both the REST API and the MDS API exist in both a test environment and a production environment, similar to Fabrica, where there is both a test and production version. For the REST API, we distinguish behind the scenes between the member API functions and the public API functions. The endpoint URLs are the same for member versus public. However, you'll get different results and you can do different things depending on whether you are authenticated or not. Authentication gives you access to the member API. If you're authenticating with a repository account, this allows you to create and update DOIs for that repository. You can also view draft DOIs and view your organization's contact information when you are authenticated. Without authentication, you'll access the public API. The public API will only allow you to view findable DOIs, and if you're looking at organization information, you won't see contact information. For the MDS API, one major difference is that authentication is always required for access, whether you are retrieving or updating metadata. We'll look at the next examples using the REST API. For this training, we'll need a few things to make API requests. You'll need a test repository account with an ID, password, and prefix. You'll also need a tool to send HTTP requests. We'll go through examples using an online tool called Postman, but you can also use the curl command line tool if you're familiar with that. We've put together a library of requests within Postman that contains everything you need for this training. To access Postman, you'll first need to create a free Postman account or log into your account. Then, once you've done that, you'll need to visit the Datacite REST API training collection at the link. To fork the collection, click Fork as shown here. Then you'll want to name your collection. It can be anything as long as it's different from the original. Leave the workspace as set to My Workspace and click Fork Collection to fork the collection. Once you've done that, you'll have your own copy of the collection and any edits you make will only affect your own copy. You're now ready to start trying out API requests in Postman. We'll start by looking at how to retrieve data using the REST API. For this first request, we're going to retrieve a list of all the DOIs associated with a given repository. Here, the repository ID is the training test repository that we'll be using for this demo. We'll use the slash DOIs endpoint. You can see that the URL ends with slash DOIs. And then we'll add a parameter, client ID, which is the parameter name for the repository ID. For this request, we'll authenticate using the consortium account VRUJ. This is the training test consortium which we'll use for this series of requests. Within this consortium, there is a consortium organization, XUVM, which has a repository, training test repository. When we authenticate using the consortium account VRUJ, 
we can see all of the DOIs, including draft and registered DOIs for the repository here. You can also see on the parameters tab that the client ID parameter is listed. Let's try sending this request and look at the response. We can see here that the response includes a list of DOIs in the data section, also includes their metadata. If we collapse this section, we can also see there's a meta section at the end, which includes summary information about the response. We can see that there are 153 total DOIs and that they have various states, findable, draft, and registered. We can see the draft and registered because we are authenticated. If we weren't, we would just see findable DOIs in the response. The meta section also includes other summary information, including resource types, created dates, and more. You can also get information about a single DOI using the DOI's endpoint. Here, instead of getting all DOIs from a given repository, we're looking at just the DOI specified after the slash. As with the previous example, we'll use the authentication for the test account VRUJ. This time, there are no parameters associated with the request. Instead, we'll include the DOI name at the end of the URL after the slash. Let's send this request and look at the response. Here we can see that the response includes the metadata for the DOI. It also includes this XML version of the metadata, which is encoded in base64. You can decode this if you want to look at the full XML. There's also some summary information at the bottom here, including the number of citations and references parts, and versions. We can also see that the DOI is related to the repository account that created it, the provider account, here the consortium organization. If we want to see the metadata in XML format, we can use an online tool to decode Base64. Here we'll paste the XML section from the API response, and we'll hit decode to see the metadata. Now we can see the metadata as XML. This was from the XML section of the API response. Before we look at the queries for creating and updating DOIs, let's briefly talk about how you can provide metadata using the REST API. There are a couple of different options for providing metadata. One is to include an XML file. This is the primary format the data site metadata takes and how the schema is defined. You can refer to the XML examples on the schema website and validate data site XML against the XSD that we provide. XML used to be the only way to specify metadata. And when you're using the data site REST API, you can still provide XML metadata However, you have to do this by including a base64 encoded string within the XML attribute of the JSON. You can't send the XML file directly using the REST API, although this is still possible with the MDS API. Because base64 encoded XML is a bit hard to read, and because we're primarily looking at the REST API today, we'll use JSON examples here. To provide JSON, you can specify individual metadata attributes, both for creating and updating a DOI. There are some slight naming differences between the XML fields and the JSON fields, but it's easier to pass JSON than XML with newer integrations. For support in formatting the JSON, the API reference linked in the slides can help. With this tool, you can generate the request needed through a form which prompts for the different metadata properties. For this example, we'll switch over to the create findable DOI query in Postman and create a DOI with some sample metadata. Here we'll create the DOI in findable state, but you can also create a draft first and then later make it findable. So now in Postman, 
we've switched to the create findable DOI query. And as you can see, this is populated with some sample metadata. There are a few things to note here. Firstly, we've specified the prefix, but not the suffix. If you specify a prefix only, data site systems will auto generate a suffix for you following our DOI naming convention best practices. If you wish to have a custom suffix, you can also specify this in the data. The other thing to notice here is that the event is publish. As mentioned, this will create the DOI in findable state, but you can create it in draft first and then send an update to make it findable later. If you wish to look at that, you can look at these create draft DOI and publish draft DOI queries in the collection, which will show you how to do this. The URL we're sending to is just the DOI's endpoint. Because we have a REST API, we are sending an HTTP POST request to create a new object. Lastly, the credentials we're using here are the repository username and password. Because we're now interacting with a DOI, we have to authenticate as the repository that the DOI will belong to. So if we send this request, you will see now that we got a 201 status created to show that this was successful. And you can see that the ID comes back now with the DOI with the auto-generated suffix. And a copy of the metadata is returned. So as you scroll down, you can see the metadata plus the XML encoded in base 64 and the various extra properties that are returned. For the last request, we'll update an existing DOI's metadata. The credentials we use here will be the same, the repository account ID and password. However, we now need to specify the DOI in the URL. The DOI that you just created will be slightly different from the example here. So you will need to replace this part of the URL with the prefix and suffix of the DOI that you just created. It's also a different type of request because we're now updating an existing object. We will use HTTP put rather than HTTP post. To make an update, you only need to submit the fields that you're updating. It is okay to send the entire metadata, but you only need to send fields that are being added, changed, or removed. So in Postman now, uh, we will go to the update DOI metadata. I'm going to copy the DOI that we just created so I can include it in the URL. So in the update DOI metadata, I'm going to update this URL to be the DOI that we just created. And uh, as you can see here, we're going to add a related identifier. If we look at the DOI we created before, you will see that we already have one related identifier. So in order to add the second, we have to supply the entire related identifiers block. Because when you send an update, it updates the entire contents of the individual JSON key. So for array-based properties such as related identifier, you must send the entire thing. So here we can see the existing related identifier and the new one that we're adding. So once we run this request, you will see that we got back HTTP status 200 OK. And if we scroll down the metadata now, you will see that the second related identifier has been added to the block. <laughs> 